All right, so today we're going to be talking about Nahira and Nilu's four stars, basically what they do, how good their constellations are. For the most part, a lot of people are gonna be summoning and they're gonna be getting constellations rather than a new character. But today we're gonna be talking about the four star items for both Nahira and Nilu, and we're gonna be looking at the weapon banner as well. So other than that, let's get straight into the video with the four stars that are gonna be appearing on their banners. Now, looking at the four stars that are going to be on their banners, we have Kuki Shinobu, Dori, and Layla. Now, Layla and Dori are technically not the super best characters in the world to have on the banner. Um, I guess you could say the number one MVP unit, of course, would be Kuki Shinobu. And Kuki Shinobu is by far one of the most important characters on this banner. That's a four star, of course, because, yeah, of course, they're not going to trump over the five star. But having... Kuki and Nahira in the same banner is going to be absolutely amazing because with Nahira and Kuki you can make a really great Hyper Bloom team especially because Kuki is a does a very good job when it comes to having um I guess you could say the Hyper Bloom teams come to life those characters or those uh four stars are going to help a lot when it comes to the Dendro reactions in certain ways or certain areas but let's go ahead and talk about Kuki Shinobu Definitely one of the characters that you want to have at certain constellation and especially level up. She's by far one of the most used characters in the game by far for Hyper Bloom teams because they make it so easy to use it and she makes um, having her on the team very useful and have a lot of utility because not only is she able to proc the Hyper Bloom seeds with her ring that she has from her skill, um, she's also able to hear your you know teammates as well so this helps out a lot in keeping them alive. You don't have to sacrifice a healer slot um, so that you can fit in, you know, healer or an electro application. You can have both in one. Um, with Kuki, you're going to basically be running elemental mastery type um, weapons and artifacts. That way she can proc the hyper bloom. You do want to get her to level 90 as well. I haven't gotten the chance to do so, but you do want to get her to level 90 as well. Her best talents, of course, are going to be her ring. This is basically all you really need to level up to help with the healing. Other than that, there's really not that anything really that you need to level up when it comes to the ult or the normal attack you don't have to level those up at all the ring is basically it because it helps you with the healing but other than that that's pretty much it now for Gugi shinobu her constellations are important because some of them help with smoothing out the rotations and keeping up her skill for long enough because that is her basically a full part of her kit so for the ult you are going to get an aoe increased of 50 percent if i'm not wrong yes that is the ult so for the c1 is not the craziest thing like i said you don't have to level up the burst but it is going to be increased by 50 percent when you get constellation one now constellation two is a really big one as well which is grass ring of sanctification which is the uh, skill for kuki shinobu duration is increased by three seconds now these three seconds are going to help out squeeze that cooldown time basically to nothing because you'll be able to have 100% uptime for the most part for Kuki's um, skill with C2. So you do want to aim for C2. Hopefully you end up getting C2 on your summons. If you don't already have Kuki Shinobu, of course you're gonna, of course hopefully you get her. But you also want to hopefully get her C2 if you're gonna keep on summoning if you haven't gotten the character yet. Um, C3 is just the level up for this skill. C4 is going to help you get these little, I guess you could say Shing Cho type of attacks um, for Kuki Shinobu's electricity application. It has very little amount of damage, but it does apply electro very little. This is a really cool constellation to have because they're able to proc Dendro reactions with just the normal attacks of certain characters. And for characters like I'll Hate Them, maybe um, some other characters that will come in the future that regard with Dendro or they use normal attacks, you can use this to your advantage, especially maybe with like Ayato with a Taser team. Um, I'll Hate Them with his general use team. These extra electro applications or these electro attacks are going to help a lot when it comes to using Kuki Shinobu. Um, Constellation 5 is going to be leaving her a plus 3 on her burst. And then C6 is a little bit of a game changer, I guess you could say. It basically allows you to take a death and not die. You can have her at 1 HP and it, you can have this happen every 60 seconds. And plus, when you're also under 25% HP, you will gain 150 elements of mastery for 15 seconds. So basically, you are going to want to kind of keep her at lower health so that she can keep proccing this. Um, but you also don't want to die as well, so heal her up just a little bit more. But this helps out when you don't want your team to take any hits that you don't necessarily want them to take. Um, if you have Kuki Shinobu take the hit. Or maybe on like the right boss, if for some reason you weren't able to get the orb up, you can switch to her. She doesn't die. It's just some really cool stuff. Um, the other character that is going to be on the banner that is going to be somewhat useful, somewhat nice to have is Layla. Now Layla is one of the sec is the second strongest shielder in the game when it comes to her shield. Now utility wise, she is not the craziest for her. Um, I guess you could say what she can provide, but 
because you have you know people like diona who can boost em who have the healing who have um the shield layla is just straight shield with cryo application so she does have her uses in certain teams with hydro teams with freeze teams with um, mono cryo there's a lot of things you can do with layla in a lot of situations that you can put her in but her shield is very very good the second strongest in the game if i'm not wrong um, for the most part you're just going to be leveling up her skill again because this is going to be her shield and then her burst if you end up getting her c6 which we'll be talking about in a quick second um this is basically the only time you're going to level it up because it will do damage um once you have like around some of the constellations but for the most part this is just going to be for application so you don't technically need to level it up the skill is pretty much the number one thing that you want to use from there for the constellations for Layla, um, C1 basically makes the shield a lot stronger and it also makes the uh, shield be applied to other nearby party members. So basically C1 is going to help out in co-op. You're going to be able to give this shield to other characters in your co-op world. Um, C2 is going to be making it to where the little stars that come from your shield, if I'm not wrong, Knights of Normal Focus. I'm trying to make sure that this is actually... okay. So the stars you get from your shield are going to restore energy for Layla. This is going to help her get her burst more, allow you to get that cryo application a lot um, more frequent. So that's really nice. Um, her skill is going to be C3. Um, her C4, when the shield shoots out the stars, you will be giving nearby party members normal and charge attack damage um, increase based on 5% of Layla's max HP. So this, once you get C4, she becomes really, really good in buffing damage for, you know, a lot of your normal tech type characters you know people like yoyamiya people like um ayato child these are some characters that you could possibly use her with to be able to proc this c4 effect and this is really good this is really great to have because you know it's going to be buffing damage you're going to be able to apply cryo so being able to use some hydro units or any other type of units you could act some really good reactions and get some damage buffs out there um c5 is just going to be the burst giving up plus three and then her C6 is when the shooting stars that come from your skill or burst are going to basically be doing more damage and the interval is going to be decreased by 20%. So that's really, really nice. A lot of really cool things for Layla. Her best constellations, I guess you could say, will be C2 because it helps with the energy. C1 is really great too because it makes the shield roll strong. C4 is really nice, I guess you could say, because it does do a damage buff. But other than that, 1, 2, and 4 are going to be really good stopping points, to be honest. C1 is basically the best bang for your buck if you do get the chance to get it. Because, you know, getting the extra shield absorption is going to be absolutely amazing to have. And then we have our last character, which not a lot of people are going to be excited for seeing her in the summons. Which is Dory. She's our Electro Healer. And for Dory, for the most part, you're going to just want to level up her Genie. Her, you know, her Q. And then for her E, you know, it's not really the best. If you want to make DPS Dory, I guess you can level up the E. But for the most part, it's not really the best thing in the world. You want to just level up the burst for her healing. And that's pretty much it. Um, For the constellations, I don't think any of these are really worth it. Because Dory is not a real worth it character. Of course, if you want to keep playing Dory, if you're already playing Dory, you want to play Dory. Um, don't let this dissuade you. Don't let this um, influence you not to do it. Because, you know, play what you want. The game is not that hard. You summon for who you want, play with who you want, all that type of stuff. Just make sure you're having fun. Um, C1 basically increases the shots that she gets from her skill. C2 basically lets the ult hit um, characters from their position. C3 is going to be a burst plus three. C4 is going to be a different type of threshold type constellation with when your HP is lower than 50%, you're going to be getting 50% incoming healing bonus. And when their energy is less than 50%, they gain 30% energy recharge. So C4 makes it really, really cool to have. Um, it's going to solve a lot of energy um, problems for a lot of your characters that you could possibly have. You could probably make some really cool things with C4. Um, this will probably be the best thing that you could possibly have and a good stopping point um, for Dory if you ended up getting C4. And then C5 is going to be the skill plus three. And then C6 is when you're using the uh, skill. Not only do you get electro infusion, but normal attacks um, when they hit opponents, they also heal your party. So this is really, really cool. This is some um, main DPS Dory type build constellation. But for the most part, you just going to want the C4 because it will help with the energy recharge and it also help with the healing bonus when you're under 50%. So these are basically all the constellations. Um, of course, Kuki is going to be the number one priority. Then is Layla, then is Dory. Um, Kuki C2, Layla C4, and then Dory C4 as well are going to be possibly the best ones that you could possibly get. And then of course we have the Web of Manor as well with the Key of Kajnisu, I think that's how you say it, and A Thousand Floating Dreams. 
Um, the Zephos Moonlight, the String List, the Sacrificial Fragments, and the Dragon's Bane. This is basically a really, really good banner in all honesty. Um, the only problem is the five stars aren't really super universal for a lot of different characters. Um, but the four stars are really nice. The Zephos Moonlight, the Favonia's Great Sword, which, you know, eh, I guess you could say that's all right. Um, Dragon's Bane, Sacrificial Fragments, and the String List. These are really good four stars to have on a um, weapon banner. If you don't have any of these, it would be a good banner to pick them up on. Um, but the problem is the thousand floating dreams in the key of kashnutna suit is a very specific weapon for nilu and for nahida this being an elemental mastery um catalyst and one being an hp percent sword you can't really use that on a lot of characters because there's not a lot of characters that use those um sub stats or you say or main stats for weapons sucrose is able to use the um thousand floating dreams that is possible but I don't think other than that, there's any other characters that are able to use this to a full degree with the EM main stat and the uh, EM sharing. Not really the best thing in the world unless you have Nahida. And then Nilu's um, key of, I keep saying it and I'm stuttering, but Kajna suit is pretty good on Kuki as well because Kuki does need the HP to be able to heal more for it to hit harder. Um, so it does help, especially because I do think it gives elemental mastery if I'm not wrong. I could be wrong about this. Um, HP is increased by 20%, which helps with the 60% already HP. And then the effect increases the equipment character elemental mastery by 0.12%. So yes, you do get elemental mastery. And then you also do get elemental mastery to all nearby party members, depending on your max HP as well. So you do want to use this um, weapon on you know characters like Nilu and Kuki. But other than that, there's not really a lot of characters at this current moment. This could change very well into Fontaine. Um, because Fontaine is going to have Hydro units for the most part, I guess you could say. And a lot of the Hydro units are scaling off of HP. So this sword could prove very well used in the future. But as of right now, as if we know right now, the only characters that could possibly use this for the most part is going to be Nilu and Kuki. Very good weapon for both of them, but you can't really use it on anybody else. No crit stat, no um, crit rate or crit um, damage. So you're not going to be able to use it on a main DPS or anything. And Thousand Floating Dreams, as of what we know right now, there's not a lot that you can put on this other than Nahida and maybe even Sucrose. Um, so for the most part, if you're not already summoning for Nilu or Nahida, you're probably not going to need to summon on this banner because this, although there's really good 4 stars on it, these two are not universal for what we know right now. They're really only for their main characters. They're both absolutely amazing for their um, main characters right now, but there are other options for, um, I guess you could say, the Thousand Floating Dreams and the Key of Kajna Suit. So other than that, that's pretty much it. Pretty good weapon banner. If you're pulling for a specific weapon regarding, you know, Nahida or Nilu, if you have both, this is absolutely amazing. If you don't have either or, this might be a skip. Um, regarding the four stars are on these banners for Nahida and Nilu, um, Kuki is amazing, Layla could be usable, and Dory is a shaft for the most part. But other than that, thank you guys so much for watching all the way to the end. See you on the next one, and peace.